The Adidas Adizero Takumi Sen 10. A handful of small changes and tweaks have made this shoe no longer the most niche running shoe. While this is an initial impressions video of this, the beautiful Adidas Takumi Sen 10, it's going to be a little bit of a different format because the Takumi Sen is not a new shoe to this channel. I covered this shoe, the Takumi Sen 9, the predecessor, quite extensively on this channel last year. In fact, the second shoe I ever talked about on this channel was this shoe, this specific pair. And I had a bit of a love-hate relationship with this shoe. Mostly because of the fit, it just did not fit my foot and it was painful to run it at times. But if I could look over that, the way the shoe felt on foot and what it offered as far as a speed shoe, a 5k shoe, a fast super shoe, really a lower stack super shoe, was wonderful. And I always wanted this shoe to work better for me than it did. So with the Takumi Sen 10, I can really say that there's been a lot of minor tweaks and changes and improvements to this shoe, which collectively have not drastically changed this shoe, but they've changed it enough that it is extremely usable, it's comfortable now, and it's a shoe that I see myself running in quite a bit this coming year. While this is going to be a little bit of a different format, I'm still going to start from the upper and work my way down this shoe. And the upper is probably where the most subtle changes that make the biggest difference to how this shoe feels on foot happen. And the biggest change is this engineered mesh material. This is a much more soft, open weaved engineered mesh than I've seen Adidas use in Adi Zero shoes ever, really. It's a really nice material. You can see the horizontal banding that runs along the shoe with the thinner vertical banding which means the shoe conforms to your foot much better. It's a softer material that wraps around your foot considerably better. And while I would say it's still a no-give upper, there is a little tiny stretch in this upper material which makes a huge difference because the Takumi Sen 9 had probably one of the most brutal mesh uppers that Adidas has ever used. While I think this upper was very clean, it didn't have a lot of overlays and unnecessary stuff on this upper like a lot of other Adi Zero shoes did even last year in 2023. This micro mesh material was so stiff and so harsh it could create a lot of rub points, but there was absolutely no give in this material and it did not really want to wrap around your foot at all. It just wanted to press into your foot which if you had any pressure points in this shoe, which you probably did because the fit in this shoe was so extreme towards a race fit, it just irritated all of them. And it was a huge problem. It was one of the biggest fit problems of this shoe. Now, the upper material that's here, again, is a nice open engineered mesh. Again, it stretches, it wraps, it's soft. It's quite a, a wonderful material. It's probably the best mesh, engineered mesh, even seller mesh material that I've seen on an Audi Zero shoe in a long time. And in fact, the leaked images we saw of the new Audios Evo C are using what looks like to be the same upper material, which is quite exciting because this upper material is great and it fits great. A few other minor tweaks in this upper are the eyelet chain, the bottom uh, lace loops for the eyelet chain are down the shoe towards the forefoot by maybe half a centimeter, five mil, maybe a quarter inch if you're thinking in inches. It's down just a little bit, but it gives the eyelet chain a longer feel on foot, which gives you a lot more ability to really dial in the lacing of the shoe. It's a nice little touch. The tongue in the shoe is that felty-like material that Adidas was using on Adi Zero shoes last year. However, it's got a back coating on it that's slippery and gives this felt material some sort of structure, which is nice. You can also see there's a padded area right here, which is actual padding in this tongue. There's more padding now in this tongue than there was in the Boston 12. And that was the only Audi Zero shoe last year that had any padding in the tongue. So all the lace bite issues that you would get in the Takumi Sen 9, they're all completely gone because the tongue material is better at distributing the load from the laces, but this padding really helps at the top of the foot. The laces, 
There's still the same horrible laces that were on the Takumi Sen 9 and every Audi Zero Zhu last year. That hasn't changed, but again, this tongue helps with the lockdown, as does this slightly longer eyelet chain. It just allows you to dial in the fit a little bit better in the shoe. The other thing I want to note, mention is the heel lock system. So they have what they call their sling launch system, which we've seen this a lot on Audi Zero shoes over the years. But this one goes a little bit deeper into the midfoot than it did in previous shoes. And you can see that here looking at the Takumi Sen 9. Additionally, along the uh, Achilles flare in the heel counter, it's still the same sort of pad here, pad here, no pad here, but they've gotten rid of a lot of this stitching that was back here, especially at the top of the Achilles, which could irritate a lot of Achilles, would ir irritate my Achilles actually. And this little flap, which Adidas calls the blinker, which is a strange name, but I did find that technical name for this in their documentation, is also changed a little bit. It's the same, this yellow material is the same material that was in the heel of the Takumi Sen 9, but the difference now is this sling launch is actually not connected to this material. So there's a gap back here now, which means that this piece of material functions sort of independently. What that means in the lockdown is that this sort of wraps around the top of the foot in a very soft way that really holds your heel in. Now the heel counter in this shoe is about the same as the Takumi Sen 9, but the pocket back here, this, this angle that you can see, feels a little deeper. I'm pointing all this out because I know people have problems with some of the Adi Zero heel uh, fit and lockdown of the heel for Adi Zero shoes last year. It seems like they've tried to address that with putting this sling launch system a little bit deeper, adjusting this little, the blinker or the flap as some people call it, and making the pocket a little deeper. I will also say the two little pads that are on here also seem to be back a little bit more and they seem to be slightly larger, few millimeters. But what I'm pointing out here is that I think the heel lock in this system for an Audi Zero shoe is probably one of the best ones. It's nice, it's deep, it holds the heel down and it works really well for me. I'm a runner who doesn't have heel lift issues, generally speaking, just because of the way my heel is shaped. I just never really have that problem but I'm really feeling how much tighter this shoe is to the heel and it feels great. And one last thing about the sizing of the Takumi Sen 10, and this is probably the most important thing to know, is you likely need to size up half a size from whatever you wore in the Takumi Sen 9. Now, when I went to the store, I tried on my normal US men's size nine uh, shoe and I asked him to bring me the nine and a half just because I thought maybe I should try the slightly bigger shoe to get maybe a better fit this year. When I put my foot in the US men's size 9 Takumi Sen 10, the upper fit just as harshly and tight as the Takumi Sen 9, but my toes were pressed up right to the front of the shoe, which is something that never happened in this shoe. This shoe was tight across the top of the foot, but there is always the normal room that I want in the front of the shoe between my big toe and the front of the shoe. Fit me like every other Audi Zero shoe, or frankly, every other running shoe, because I always buy a size 9. In the US men's size nine for the Jakumi Sen 10, my toes were smashed up into the front of the shoe. So I tried on the nine and a half and found that now the upper fit really nicely. It was tight, but it was conforming to the foot. It wasn't painful. I had enough room. It felt like a really nice, somewhere between a race fit and a training fit. And my toes had the right amount of room between my big toe and the front of the shoe. My normal sort of distance that I get in a normal Audi Zero size 9 US men's. Now something I noticed as I was preparing the materials for this video was that the actual physical length of the 9.5 Takumi Sen 10 and the 9 Takumi Sen 9 was identical. Both these shoes are 29.3 centimeters long. In fact, if you look at them side by side, kind of putting them together as a pair, they look like they're the same size, but they're not. The Takumi Sen 10, which is the white shoe, is a nine and a half. The Takumi Sen 9, which is the black shoe, is a nine. So the last for the Takumi Sen 10 is obviously different and it's obviously smaller. So you need to size up at least half a size, maybe a full size, depending on how the Takumi Sen 9 fits you. So keep that in mind when you're trying the shoe on and looking for it online. Now let's move to the midsole of the shoe, which I think has the biggest changes that make the ride of the shoe that much better. It's not that the ride of the Takumi Sen 9 was bad. It wasn't. 
It's just this one is better. And I think there's two reasons for that. The first is I believe the foam in this shoe, the Light Strike Pro, that's 100% of the foam in this shoe, is slightly softer. I think it's a minor change, and Adidas said this in the press release, but they're really trying to focus this shoe on grip and cushion. And that's the biggest sort of design objective for the Takumi Sen 10 change. And the cushion, I think, is noticeably different in the shoe. But this shoe does ride a little firmer because this shoe now has the Energy Rod 2.0, which is the system that goes from the heel to the toe as one piece. It's the same Energy Rod system that's in the Boston 12, doesn't have the lateral wing here, it's just the rods, or the Audios Pro 3. Now, it's not carbon fiber, it's not carbon fiber infused like the rods were in the Takumi Sen 9, they're the glass fiber rods. I believe they're the same as what's in the Boston 12, but that, I think, stiffens this shoe up where this shoe now feels like a single unit, which is a big change that I noticed when I was running in this shoe. And what do I mean by that? So in the Takumi Sen 9, when I was using this shoe to do really hard, fast running, I'm talking 200s, 400s, 800s, where I'm really pushing into this shoe, I'm loading the forefoot of this shoe up, I'm really driving hard, I'm at my max pace, basically. Sometimes this shoe would almost feel like it was folding about here, right in the middle. And it was not a great feeling. What I think was actually happening is because if you look at the exploded view of the shoe, the rods only go from the midfoot to the toe. And there's a carbon plate in the heel. So, and they're completely disconnected. So what I think was happening was the shoe literally was folding in the middle when I was really driving into the ground. So the rods were getting pushed down by my heel pushing down on the carbon plate, pushing the rods into the forefoot and up to the point where not only did the shoe feel like it was folding in half, sometimes I would feel the rods in my forefoot, especially on the lateral side. That would only happen if I was doing, say, 8 by 400s by like the 6th, 7th, 8th rep. I would definitely start to feel the rods and the shoe felt like it was just sort of breaking in half. And again, this is when I'm really driving into the ground. And it really was not a nice feeling. But in the Takumi Sen 10, because now we have the heel to toe energy rods, it's all one piece. It feels like it's connected. I talked about how the heel feels like it's wrapping around the back of the foot more and the lockdown is better back here. But that's allowing the shoe to sort of function now as one unit. I can feel the rod from the heel to the toe when I'm engaging the forefoot of the shoe. When I'm really driving into the ground, doing 400s in this shoe, which was the first workout I did in the first run in this shoe. Probably not the best way to start with the shoe, but I'm glad I did. I really felt sort of the, the stiffness of the rods in this shoe. I felt the cushion of the foam, and I felt the pop off the toe because of that full length Energy Rod 2.0 system. It's a subtle change to the shoe, but it makes a world of difference in how this shoe runs. It makes this shoe much more uh, seamless, much more connected. It feels like one unit now, and it actually works in a lot of different speeds now extremely well. The other thing I'm going to say about the energy rods in here is that there's a little wing that wraps around the toe off the rod that goes under the big toe and wraps around right where you're towing off. If you look at this exploder view, you can see that very clearly. Now, what I think that's doing is when I'm running in this shoe and I'm landing forefoot and I'm towing off, that material is right here, right where I'm towing off, and it feels stiffer on the toe. It actually kind of feels like a carbon plate. I'm getting the stiffness of the rods along the length of the shoe. I still get the flex of the independent rods across the shoe, but now I'm getting that little sort of extra pop that allows me to dig in the toe when I'm towing off on the shoe, and it feels great. I'm feeling like I'm getting the best of all worlds with the configuration of the rods and the foam and that little wing in the toe of the shoe. Now, overall, the geometry of the midsole of the shoe is the same. We're still talking about 33 mil of foam in the heel, 27 mil of foam in the forefoot, giving you a 6 mil drop. That's identical to this shoe. In the geometry, I would call a more traditional geometry in this midsole. There isn't a lot of uh, forefoot rocker is the same between these two shoes. In fact, if I turn the shoe around to the medial side, you can see the actual geometry of the midsole much better. We have a flatter heel and a little bit of a rocker in the forefoot, but this is a very traditional rocker. 
When you look at the lateral side, you're looking at also the heel bevel on this side, so it makes this shoe look like it's much more rounded than it is. It's not that extreme. This is a much more traditional geometry, which, because of the stiffer rods, the softer foam, means that this shoe really just gets out of the way when you're really moving fast. Now, I'm a cadence runner. Uh, my cadence, generally, for easy running is around 180 steps per minute. But when I'm getting above 5K pace and really getting into like my max speed in 400s or 200s, I can see 190s, even 200s. And that's where the rocker in a shoe, if a shoe has a lot of foam and a lot of rocker, sort of gets in the way for me because it's almost like the rocker can't keep up with how many steps I'm doing per minute. This shoe completely disappears. Since it is a more traditional geometry, it just lets me push into the ground, roll forward, that little wing here is giving me that little pop off the toe, and it's an excellent shoe for really fast, hard running because it just doesn't get in the way. It disappears on the foot, it supports me, it gives me the pop off the toe, the support from the rods, the cushion from the foam. I feel agile, I feel cushioned, and I feel a ton of grip in this shoe at the fastest paces all the way down to easy running. This shoe now does easy running fairly decently. Now there's a couple other tweaks to the geometry and the midsole of this shoe which you can see in the outsole. And I think the biggest noticeable difference is the amount of material in the forefoot of the shoe. There is considerably more material in the forefoot of the shoe that in the 10 than there was on the 9. And this cutout that they have in the midfoot, which is showing you the rods, in the 10 is shifted back a little bit. It doesn't come into the forefoot as much as it does on the 9. And I think it's overall just a little bit smaller. And what that's giving you is it's giving you more of a platform to land up here. As a forefoot striker, I have a huge nice sweet spot up here that I can land on and it feels great to toe off. If I heel strike in this shoe, the heel bevel absorbs my initial impact, rolls me forward, and as soon as I get into the forefoot of the shoe, it's just a very natural toe off feeling. And I think that's the rods doing their work, but I also think it's this bigger uh, piece of material that's in the forefoot of the shoe. This lateral rail as well is just allowing um, the outside of my foot to absorb, it's moving me inward, it's engaging the forefoot, and it's allowing me to toe off. There's a lot of subtle engineering that I think they did with the sculpting of this that's different in the 10 than it was in the 9, and I think it makes a huge difference in how this shoe actually runs. It's much more versatile, it's much more comfortable, and as I said, this shoe does that fast hard running really well, but I think because of this rail and how it captures the foot and it gives you the bigger sweet spot in the toe, it just allows me to do easier running or what I would call tempo running in the shoe, which is a big surprise. I did not expect a Takumi Sen to ever work for tempo running. And the last thing I want to point out about this shoe, and I think this is a really subtle change, but I think the better heel lockdown, the energy rods that now run as a single piece from the heel to the toe, the bigger sweet spot and more material in the forefoot along with this cutout being shifted back a little bit, there's a big emphasis about forward in this shoe. This shoe, even if you're a heel striker, wants to get you up on your toe. It wants to get you into the forefoot because that's where you're really engaging the technology in the shoe on toe off. There's just, it feels like there's a big bias to the front of the shoe now. I think some of that too is the weighting of the shoe. The balance of the shoe is a lot closer to the Adios 8 where it feels a little bit more front heavy I think the piece of rubber, this orange piece of rubber up here, is a little thicker than it was on the Takumi Sen 9. And again, I think that absorbs uh, the impact when you're really driving into the ground. I also think that makes the uh, forefoot a little bit firmer, but again, that's giving you better grip because there's more cushion in the foam. So that's making the overall package here much more agile, especially for faster running, especially for like a 5K course that has a lot of twists and turns. This is now an ideal shoe for that because you have great grip, you have a great platform up here, and it's shifting you forward, which is going to make you a faster runner. This shoe is about speed across the board, and it is a beautiful feeling. In case you can't tell, I love this shoe. The Takumi Sen 10 update is massive. All the fit issues that I had a problem with, as soon as I went up half a size, the new upper material, the better heel lock, the revised midsole, this bigger forefoot pad, the energy rods that go from heel to toe, this shoe is better across the board. 
and running in it, I've done 40.6 kilometers in this shoe right now to get to this video for my initial testing. I've done 400s in this. I've done marathon pace, half marathon pace, 10K pace, 5K pace. I've done easy running in this shoe and it's done it all well. I've done easy running in this shoe. As I said earlier, I never thought I would be able to use a Takumi Sen for easy running. Now that's not what this shoe is for, but it can do that. And that opens this shoe up to be much more versatile for me. This is a shoe that I would now take on a, say, 20K run where I need to do 1K reps or maybe do five, uh, two 5K reps in that 20K. A type of run that I would normally use, say, a Boston 12 or my race shoe for, I would go out in this shoe now to do that because I can do the warm up, I can do the rest in between the sets, and I can do the faster stuff much more efficiently and I'm getting more training stimulus because this shoe's making me work harder because it's not as rocker, there's not as much foam in the shoe. It's a beautiful shoe. This is a shoe that I'm going to use a lot this year. And as I'm thinking about sort of a, a rotation right now for training for any sort of road racing, if you have your non-plated daily trainer and then you have your race shoe, this shoe now really fits in nicely between those because for any real long runs, any kind of marathon, half marathon pace training, I'm gonna use my race shoe for that. Any sort of true easy runs, I'm gonna use my non-plated daily trainer for that. Everything else, I'm probably gonna use this now. This kind of replaces the Boston 12 for me, though I still love the Boston 12, it's just I prefer a more nimble, lighter, more agile shoe. This shoe's great, it is very agile, but at the same time, this shoe can do all that faster running that I wouldn't necessarily want to do in the Boston 12 or my race shoe because of all the rocker and all the foam in those shoes. So I can do all that shorter, faster stuff in this shoe now. And it's beautiful. I took this shoe out yesterday on a 14K sort of just easy cruise, really 60% effort, but it was probably even a less, little less than that. And I was just cruising about 10 to 15 seconds off my current marathon pace very comfortably, no problems. And I had no foot pain. I had no sort of the rods digging into my feet. The cushion was enough for what I want. It just was a very great run in a shoe that really is surprising me extensively. I'm obviously going to be spending a lot of time in this shoe this year. This update has been huge for this shoe. It's made it much more versatile for me for a lot more use cases. Again, that's why I don't call this shoe the most niche running shoe anymore. It's not. This is a very versatile shoe now, and I'm going to be spending a lot of time in it. I will definitely be back with a 100-mile review of the shoe, probably more because I think I'm going to hit that pretty quickly in this shoe because I enjoy running it that much. Even though Adidas has some exciting shoes coming out later this year, and there's still a couple other non adidas shoes that are super exciting that will compete with this shoe coming out this year. This is one I'm going to rely on a lot for tempo work, workouts, speed work, and sort of everything in between. It's a great shoe. I'm shocked how good it is. I'm shocked how much I'm enjoying it. And I think it is probably one of the best updates to a shoe that's well loved that I've seen in some time. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you find this content useful, consider subscribing. You'll see more content from me pop up in your feed. If not, drop a like on this video because it helps this channel continue to grow, which I always appreciate. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.